name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Behold, Arthur, this is the Holy Grail. Look well, Arthur, for it is your sacred task to seek this Grail. That is your purpose, Arthur. The quest for the Holy Grail. Hello and welcome to what might be the worst DVD update on YouTube. I just got home. i uh, been going to a Walmart and the search for the horror holy grail, that infamous 8-pack. I can't find it. I, you know, I feel like a bum rummaging through a dumpster, sifting through that $5 bin at Walmart. I, I'm tempted to, you know, to put my leg over the top and just wallow inside the, uh, DVD mediocrity, but I did find a couple of five buck movies. They're more of those, um, I don't know, five one movie, get eight movies you've never heard of for free deals. First one here is 20 films of Alfred Hitchcock. Sounds great, right? Five dollars for 20 Hitchcock films. Problem, it's most of his early stuff. I think a lot of these are probably in the public domain. I don't care. Uh, I'm not going to search out all the Hitchcock films and look for ones that are public domain, download them and do all that shit. It takes too long. I'd rather have them all in one little location here. Um, the, uh, on disc one, it has uh, The Lady Vanishes, which is pretty good. I watched that uh, not too long ago. It's uh, really a pro-World War II film. It uh, was made in 1938, just as World War II was starting to, uh, I guess, percolate would be a term to use. Um, very much uh, nationalistic, very much uh, pro-English. Um, really good movie. 1938, it's black and white. The sound quality on these, I, I bet it's going to suck. The picture quality is black and white. I mean, what's the difference? Um, there's a couple of Alfred Hitchcock Presents episodes, which are usually pretty good for TV. Uh, on disc two, uh, The Secret Agent is on there. Uh, 39 Steps is supposed to be good. I've never seen that. Uh, disc three, ugh, I've never heard of any of these. They're black and white, all of them, obviously. And a couple, uh, three silent movies. Jamaica Inn might be good. It's got Charles Lawton in it. So I'll need to check that one out on disc three. I've never even heard of it. This four has Sabotage, a 1936 one. Uh, the Man Who Knew Too Much, not the remake, but the 1934 film of Peter Lorre. I've seen clips of that. I've never seen it all the way through. Five bucks, 20 films of Alfred Hitchcock, arguably the greatest director of all time. He's up in the top five or ten. And it, I, I just open it up and look inside. It, man, it, it is really shit-tastic. Look at this. You've got this, um, I don't know what the hell it is. This is from Mill Creek Entertainment, so what do you expect? And they're the... They really churn out the, you know, the shitty transfers or anything. For five bucks, twenty Hitchcock films. I think *The Lady Vanishes* alone is worth five bucks. So that's me. But look at the way it's packaged in here. You've got these ghetto sleeves, right? This is what you would expect someone who did their own CD mixtape to uh, hand out to you. All right? There's uh, one, two, four discs in here. Five, uh, yeah, it's not packaged well. You're not. Ex I'm, what I was expecting, I guess, a, a bust of Alfred Hitchcock for five dollars or whatever, and you open up his mouth and just come out. No. But five bucks. And one more. I haven't even opened it yet. It's a. Let me get this in frame here. Four movie marathon, I guess they call it. Four times the terror for five bucks. You've got the Fun House. A very good Toby Hooper film. I know a lot of people don't like Toby Hooper. They think, they think he's a one-hit wonder or some shit. That's horse shit. Toby Hooper's one of the top, you know, horror directors of the last 50 years. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre alone, if you just did that and you said that's a one-hit wonder, that's the first modern horror film. Every film that's come, you know, basically that's not a slasher, uh, you know, from the mid-70s to present day, is owes its... Um, it's birth to Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And if you watch Hooper films, you know, there's some obvious disappointments. Uh, his work in the 80s wasn't good. 
Because I feel like a lot of directors... See, the, the 80s weren't... The 80s were the time of the slasher. You know, find some good 80s horror that didn't involve slashers, that's hard to do. Hooper is not a slasher director. Right? He's more of the torture kind of um, genre, if there's such a thing. Uh, the Funhouse... I really like the Funhouse. It's uh, obviously not as good as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, if I'm getting the focus there. It's, uh, this one right here. Um, it really... Uh, it's in a carnival setting, and it's in one of the ways, it's, it kills off all those old universal horror monsters. Uh, there's uh, the old... Um, you've got a, a Dracula uh, guy who's the magician. You have... Uh, the, the old fortune teller lady, who's basically a, a $20 whore, and this, that's probably too much she was charging for that, even the two-headed mutant freak. Um, I forget, there's other, uh, I think it'd be, uh, the two-headed mutant wears the Frankenstein mask. I think what Hooper's trying to do in this film, in the funhouse, is show that those old monsters are not scary anymore. What's scary? Mother Nature. What Mother Nature can create, like a two-headed sex beast. Which is what this guy is, right? The guy that wears the Frankenstein mask, and he, buy, he buys the the uh, old gypsy teller for you know twenty bucks or whatever, and he prematurely, um, <clears throat> you know, and he feels ripped off, he feels slighted, and that's where all the trouble is. That, imagine trying to sell that to a studio today. <laughs> I've got a movie about these guys that go, to, you know, it's a group of. You know, cute kids. One chick's got big boobs. The other chick has a great ass. That's it all. That's the other Toby Hooper uh, earmark of his uh, milieu. You have one chick with really big tits and one chick with a really great ass, and they team up with their stu both. You know, their boyfriends are dumb. You know, they're 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 slasher fodder. Well, he's not a slasher. Actor. They're 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 gonna die, right? Uh, these kids go in a place they're not supposed to be. The funhouse. And they are witness to a mutant who has two faces, basically, it's split in half. Um, there's some sort of symbolism there that I, I don't know if I can figure out myself right now, the two-headed monster guy. But they witness him having sex, or tr attempting sex, with an, a decrepit old gypsy teller slash whore. Uh, they see that the uh, rendezvous... Uh, is uh, prematurely uh, ends and chaos ensues, right? Green like that today. You wouldn't get it. It might be on Sci Fi Channel, maybe, or Chiller. But I really like the Funhouse. I think Toby Hooper gets shit on. Whether he directed Poltergeist or not, who gives a shit? Alright? Look at his stuff in the early 90s. I like spontaneous combustion. Alright? It's, it's Jesus. It's the story of Jesus. Brad Dorf is the passion of radioactive Christ. He plays this guy who doesn't know his origins. Right? He's like the first post-nuclear man. Um, he has stigmata in the movie. Right? His hands always uh, burning up, and um, he has these powers. He's not sure what to do with. Doesn't know where they came from. It's it's a, it's it's corny and cheesy in some spots. Yeah, it's cheap, but it's a great little movie because of Brad Dourif. Right? Who else would you want to play Christ besides Jim Caviezel but Brad Dourif? I don't know. Maybe Max von Sydow. That's, all, that's the top three Christ guys right there. Dourif, Caviezel, von Sydow. Right there. Uh, the Mangler is great. Go see Rambo Rap for Life's video on The Mangler. That movie's awesome. If you hate modern machinery, if you hate the world we live in, this corporate piece of shit... You know, non-human uh, world. Watch the Mangler. It'll be it'll fit right in with it. I did. I love the Mangler. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else he's directed recently. Most of it sucks. But there was that those those two movies in the '90s. That's enough for me to claim that Toby Hooper. If you throw in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Funhouse, Life Force is alright. It's entertaining. All right. I haven't even seen Invaders from Mars. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. I believe that. That's one of the greatest sequels of all time. Why am I going through all this shit? On the back, it says, Chilling favorites from directors. Wes Craven, Don Coscarelli, and more. Toby Hooper doesn't even get a mention on the fucking disc. It says, Directors Wes Craven, Don Coscarelli, and more. 
they throw in Toby Hooper with more. And I'll get to it later. This uh, this last film, which is dog shit, doesn't. If it, if you took the last film on this four pack, it would really be a good deal. Let me get to the rest of it, and I can shut the fuck up on here. Phantasm two, good sequel, not as good as the original. Fa and original Phantasm, Don Coscarella, he's a one hit wonder. All right, Bubba Hotep's entertaining, but it's not a good film. It's like it's a, it's cheesy fun. It's not. There's no artistic quality in that. Phantasm, the original Phantasm, is a piece of fucking art. It's beautiful. You know, those Europeans, those snobbish Europeans, you know, those Italians all caught up in their imagery, the French and their critical theory. Show them Phantasm. What America made over a time period where, you, you know, you had no money. It's a beautiful film. Does it make any sense? No. Good. It's a great fucking horror film. That's what I want. I would prefer Phantasm, but Phantasm 2 is an action sort of sequel. It's worthy. It's decent. It's a fun watch. I think that one chick's in it's pretty hot. Not not the blonde, but the brunette. I think she, I think she shows her tits. Well, there's that. In fact, that's that's you know let's we're working our way up to the five dollar value. Serpent in the Rainbow is the third option here. I saw this one a kid when I was a kid and it scared the shit out of me. I haven't seen it in 20 years. I'll have to check this out. I haven't seen Serpent and Rainbow in a while. Wes Craven, he's, a, he's sort of a hit and miss guy, but you got to give the guy respect. He deserves to have his name on top. Don Coscarelli doesn't deserve his name over Toby Hooper. The final movie, I don't know why the fuck this movie's on here. Also, this is, this is how the you know, 70s were. You get a, a movie greenlit, and the title's fucking consonants. It's not even a word. It's sis. Zanuck and Brown produced this. It's got Strother Martin in it. You know, what we have here is a failure to communicate. Like, what we have here is a failure to replicate previous artistic craft. Uh, I'll probably edit that out. That was awful. Um, but it's awful. It's, it sucks. I've seen this, you know, a couple years ago. It's about Dirk Benedict's face turning into a snake. Strother Martin, who wants to aid man's evolution, obviously, you know, this transhumanist Strother Martin thinks the man's next step in evolution is here's the logical progression in Strother Martin's mind, right? Single celled organisms, small, you know, reptiles, mammals, primates, man, back to reptiles, snake, right? We want to go back in time. This is, this is the back to the future of evolution. It's it is shit. It's an awful film. Uh, Heather Minjes is in it. If I remember, her nude scene's blocked out. They go like skinny dipping or something. It's, they've got some sort of matted uh, flora and fauna covering her naughty bits. It's an awful film. Uh, Strother Martin's decent in it, but that's the only saving grace. Why the fuck is this movie on here? It's not even a horror film, really. It's more of those, you know, creature kind of transformation. There's no depth to it at all. It's there's no, you know, no sign of any artistic artistic craft or anything. It's an awful fucking movie. But with the Funhouse, Phantasm Two is a decent sequel. I haven't seen Serpent Rainbow in a while, so I need to check that out. It was worth this piece of shit, this quadrant right here. Forget that, right? The Fun House, five bucks. Walmart. One day I will find the Holy Grail that eight horror pack. There's, they have a couple. Of, they had a couple of eight horror packs, and you get a little excited, like you've seen just the edge. It's like that Woody Woodpecker cartoon you see. The legs, some sort of beautiful creature, a woman preferably, and they move up closer and closer. You get closer, you see the eight pack, and you look at the label, and it says some shit, you know, from sci-fi or chiller. And oh fuck, it's not the eight pack. It's not the one with, you know, Ghoulies three or whatever. Which is the, the finest Ghoulies film, despite what some people may say. Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies go to college. Ghoulies matriculate to school. Uh, is the finest of the Ghoulies 3 film. Alright, I'm running towards the 15 minute limit. Um, I, don't, I don't do these often because I'm not very good at it. But I went to Walmart recently looking for the Holy Grail. Find, I found a couple of $5 buys that I thought were decent. Throw them up here. All my subscribers, both of you, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Uh, is it the worst 
DVD update? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Thanks again.